Thank you, everyone. Uh, Sue, as president, uh, life members, house guests, you know, Brian, great 56 years, it's an enormous performance. Uh, and particularly to the members in the room who made Thursday such a special day for the golf club. Um, an important part of that has certainly been Brian Simpson. You know, I, many of you have participated on Thursdays for far longer than I have. Um, I've been a member of the club for probably 30 something years and uh, I've got my own story about a golf lesson with Brian as well, but we, we won't go there. Um, but the golf clubs are terrific places and uh, we, I think this particular golf club is a special place and it's people like Brian Simpson who are such significant um, characters and, and uh, players in making these places special. So. Um, this week is the 48th year, the anniversary of the 48th year that Brian started as the head professional at Victoria Golf Club. So 48 years of, of commitment and attachment to the golf club is an enormous achievement. So well done, Brian. Yeah. It's, al it's always nice to go out the top of your game. And we've been talking to Brian for a little while about uh, you know, Thursday nights is such a special night. That Brian was keen to go out on his terms and uh, make his last night a good night, um, and so that's why tonight it uh, it's ties in with his 48 years. He's also having a couple of weeks away, so we thought it would be a good time tonight to do it. Brian's contribution to the golf club has been enormous. All the people who've interacted with him over the years, the, the staff that have worked with him, two of whom are in the room tonight, that Brian will probably say something about later on. All of us who have enjoyed Brian's company and uh, interacted with him over the years. The club recognised Brian's commitment and uh, involvement with the club in 2004 when they, the club made the decision to offer and uh, make Brian a life member, which is a tremendous acknowledgement of the, the person, but also his commitment and his attachment to the golf club. So that was 2004. In 2017, the, we, the club commissioned a uh, biography of Brian, Simo, A Life in Golf, which is a lot of fun to read, um, tells some great stories, a lot of the anecdotes and stories, the flavour of Brian you get on a Thursday night is captured in, in that book. So another tribute to Brian on the journey. Just a little bit of background, um, 1957, which I was a year old, I think in 1957, Brian started as an apprentice of Woodlands Golf Club. He, Brian worked at Easton, Yarrawonga and Rostar Golf Clubs over the years before, before starting at Victoria Golf Club in 1973, some 48 years ago. 1973, golf was Prime Minister. So we we're about halfway through those exciting years of Gough Whitlam's three-year reign as a uh, Prime Minister. Um, the, uh, Rupert Hamer was Premier of Victoria and arguably he was one of those, uh, the definition of a Liberal uh, was probably true about Rupert Hamer, so he was Premier in 1973. For the Tigers in the room, uh, Richmond won the Premiership in 1973. So um, some things don't change, maybe. Uh, so that was probably their last year of being a real powerhouse, and uh, they're obviously in one now. One, so the Australian Open was won that year by J.C. Snead, who's uh, the nephew of Sam Snead of Royal Queensland. So um, not, I don't know that he was up, uh, as, well, he certainly wasn't as famous as his uncle, but that's a name. Jack Merrick was general manager of Victoria Golf Club. So I'm sure Brian's got plenty of stories about Jack Merrick, but uh, <laughs> we won't go there tonight. I think Brian's um, been involved through the tenures of just shy of 20 captains in that period of time. <laughs> I'm the last of those, although there'll be people who follow when Brian's still here. So it's, uh, he's been through a lot of captains in that period of time. Um, and I think if I counted up, I got to, my estimate is he stood in front of this microphone on something like about 2,100 Thursday evenings and done presentations. So that's a fair performance. 200,000 uh, presentations.
Brian has also got the honour of being a life member of the PGA, so the Australian uh, Professional Golfers Association. So that's also a tribute. You know, back in the early years, Brian, both while working as a club professional, also um, participated administratively in the, the PGA of Victoria and Australia. So his commitment was to golf was over and above what he did at Victoria Golf Club. So he's a, a broad character who's uh, best, in, he's always been focused on the best interests of golf and members of Victoria Golf Club, but more broadly the golfing industry. So uh, a great commitment over a long period of time. So Brian, we'll miss your presence on a Thursday night, as some of the people have already said. And I think it's been terrific to share the Thursday nights with you. All the best for the future. We have a, uh, a presentation to make to you. This is not in its final form. It will be framed, but it's not framed yet because there was a, a few uh, signatories added to it to uh, make it. But Brian, for 48 years of service to Victoria Club, and particularly 48 years of service to the Thursday guys who play Thursday, well done. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> uh, thank you, David. Lovely words, and uh, thank you, everyone. And it's nice to uh, to do this with with a full house. So those who are here, I appreciate that. I want to explain why I have these three young um, men with me on the golf course today. I had to choose, and uh, I went on around this room. There's no one here that I don't really like. I mean, I, 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 I like everyone that I see in this room. But when I chose. Well, Paul was obviously, we, we'll start with you, Paul, because Paul came here in 1991, 1991, 1973, and uh, he stayed here and we've worked together for 30 years. And he's been fantastic. He was the one that proposed me for the life membership of the Australian PGA, which I would never have gotten without you because um, I lived a quiet life and they wouldn't have heard about me. But you told them all this stuff and, and uh, Anyway, it was really funny because when we ran up there, um, Charlie Earp, he's well known, he was, he's a pro at Royal Queensland, and he was the one who trained Greg Norman. And uh, Paul saw me after the meeting, and uh, Greg Norman and I were going to be going through on the same program. And Charlie got up and he spoke for 15 minutes about Greg. Not all, it was about at least 10 minutes of his tournament victories. And then he talked about charity work and all the other stuff and he sat down and everyone else did this and Greg went through and then I said to Charlie, if you mention my tournament record, I'm out the door. <laughs> and, uh, he said, we're putting you through for different reasons, but that was good because Paul was outside, he was waiting for me, he said, how did you go? I said, I got through, but the other guys struggled a bit. <laughs> that was nice. Then we went, I had a chance to either go to the PGA meeting or go fishing with Paul and uh, we caught two, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, I caught two. That's good. But you've been an important part of my life. Paul was a wonderful player. When I first met him, I didn't change his swing because I believed in it. And I really felt, and have always felt, that he's one that could have been a tournament player. Unlike uh, Danny in the middle here, <laughs> who's a great personal friend, and he's here for that reason that we've remained great friends since the time of his apprenticeship, which was about 80s. Mid-80s. Mid-80s, mid-80s. And his, um, uh, his family and my family have been sort of closely united many nights together and he's an important part of my life. When he first met this man, he took my daughter out. That's a beautiful young lady up there uh, sitting next to her to my beautiful wife. And uh, I, uh, he, he he finished up marrying someone, I don't know why I like this so much, he married someone else in the end, and then he, he broke my antique chair, that, that wasn't good, uh, I mean antiques were worth something, and uh, so but, uh, we remained great friends, and then Brucey e. Peacock came to me as a 13 year old, huh? 14, 14 year old. And we sort of knocked him into shape, and it was the first person, the reason he's here, I went to the board, 
and I said, this young man, not only is going to be a very good player, but he's a very good person. I think you should consider him for junior membership. That went through. He was the first one that I suggested. He finished up so well that he's played over 160 pennant games for this club with over 100 victories. Both of those things are records. Yeah. He was one of my pupils. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what else to say about the little views, Ray. Now, when I look at Bob Vance, I, I, uh, I had so much respect for Bob Vance that when we first met, it was Mr. Simpson and Mr. Vance, you know, and then it was quite on we sort of go Bob and Brian. But I couldn't handle that. I loved him so much, I had to call him Mr. Bob. <laughs> That worked for a while. Then he started to call me Mr. Brian and I love that afternoon. <laughs> and do you remember that, don't you? Mr. Bob. That's it. That's a sign. You're the only one. There are other people uh, in the room, but you're all equally important to me. Um, I've loved my time here and I, I owe you more than you owe me. So to my beautiful wife and daughter and son at the far end there, um, for being here tonight. I knew that Joan was coming, but uh, this is really good because it means I'm bound to get a ride home or someone. <laughs> <laughs> and to have uh, our president here, with husband Peter, thank you, I appreciate that. I, I know that all these people. I think I've been talking, don't leave anything out. <laughs> it's a big family. I had a lot to say, but I left my notes. I, I can tear them up anyway. No good of notes. But um, David, you passed on to your board that uh, I owe you more than you owe me. Steve Perkin, my author, <laughs> Steve came to me and he said, I want to write your story. I said, it's not going to happen. And uh, he said, why? He said, it'd be interesting. And I said, it'd be so boring. It's so one dimensional. Just golf all the time, you know, and it's 60 odd years. I said, the answer is no. So anyway, I think he went to see Peter Stackpole and then someone else. And I saw him next week, he said, oh, by the way, it's on. <laughs> and I said, okay, well. Anyway, that was nice and I actually enjoyed it. In fact, I read it about a month ago. Uh, I thought I knew what was in it, but, so I didn't read it, but there's some stuff in there. And um, anyway, it was $20, so if anyone's interested, I think it's down, I think it's down to $1.95 now. <laughs> I'm getting thirsty, you know what I mean, and I want to just say, I love you all, thank you very much. Amen.